May the Lord bless and keep you. Let me say this before I begin. Look, I have done many bad things in my past. Many. So when I tell you about things or what you need to do to change, listen, I had to do it myself and I still do it. So I am not sitting here trying to make myself look all perfect or like an angel and stuff like that because I was not before. I did not do the right thing before. So I can't tell you, hey, I have been good all my life because no, <laughs> I have not. So keep this in mind. I don't see myself better than anyone, no one. I am just an average person trying to get to heaven. That's it. So when I tell you that, hey, it would be wise if you do this and that, hey, I am not looking at you, looking down at you, calling you a puny ant or anything like that, because that is foolish. Let me say this. So when I say things, I am not trying to make myself look innocent or anything like that because back then I was not. I was not, not even close to it. So let me get to my point. Back in 2016, this, is a time when I was serving God and everything like that. Back in 2016, someone really did me wrong. And later I found out that it was because of something that happened back when we were kids, <laughs> which I did not do anything to this person. It was based upon someone else. Back in 2016, I was treated wrongly. And the old me, I would seek out for revenge. I would search for a weak spot and attack. <laughs> But as a Christian, even back in 2016, I could not do that. I knew that if I were to hurt that person or seek out revenge, I know that I would reap what I have sown. So I was like, I have to forgive. I have to move on. So even when this person was acting so crazy to me, I had to take it and stay humble. Do you know how hard that is? Like someone talking really crazy to you, acting really crazy to you, acting as if you are the enemy when you are here to help. Anyways, around that time, I was crying so much. And I was mad that I was crying and I believe demons were trying to get me angry at him because I was crying I had to constantly pray so that hatred and bitterness would not take me over. I am serious. I had to continuously pray so that hatred and bitterness would not take me over because this person was acting in a really weird way for absolutely no reason. On top of that, I would help this person. 
I would help this person so much, but this person was treating me as if I was the enemy. So I was thinking, what am I doing wrong? And I was praying to God, what am I doing wrong? What am I saying wrong? So it got to the point where when he would act a certain way, I had to act like nothing is going on. I just had to take it. And there were other things as well, which I am not going to talk about. And I was asking God, why is this happening to me? Is it because of what I did back when I was younger? Like, am I still getting punished for that? And I am thinking, why is this happening? Like, I changed my life. I am not doing those bad things anymore. What is going on? Three months later, or four months later, I receive a call from that person. This person apologized to me. And when this person apologized to me, so much anger just... <laughs> came to me and I just wanted to shout at that person. So much anger raged within me when he apologized. But I did not say anything. And I had to calm myself down. He said, Kevin, if you felt like I was mistreating you, these are the reasons. You know, I was going through something and blah, 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 and this and this and that. Then he called me either once a month or once a week. And the next for phone calls, he would apologize to me each time. And he was telling me more about what was going on to him at that time period. And I had to pray because when he was telling me why he was acting that way toward me, It was really hard to accept. And I don't know what the word is called, but when he was telling me that stuff, like I felt, I don't know what to call it, but something within me, I can't describe it, but it was like a, are you serious feeling? But I could feel that within me which I can't explain it in words, but I had to pray that anger would not take me over. And this person was asking, hey, Kevin, do you want to go out to eat with me? And my first response was like, I wanted to say, never, <laughs> never. <laughs> Never, but I told myself, Kevin, you need to go out with him. Even though you don't want to, you need to do it anyway. So I went out with him maybe four or five times, maybe three, three or four, I forget. And, um, he was offering me to come over his home and do some things there. What is your point, Kevin? What came to me last night or two nights ago, I forget. 
you always have to keep the door open. You always have to keep the door open. What do you mean, Kevin? What do you mean by keeping the door open? Listen. As I grow more in God, as I seek God, the more I pray, God is teaching me more about faith, more about love. Yes, faith and love. When it comes down to love, we can't separate from our enemies. We always have to keep the door open for them. I am not saying that you have to allow them in your home. I am not saying that you have to give them all your money. I am not saying that. But what I am saying, we have to keep the door open for them. Even if they betray you so many times, we have to keep the door open for them. Of course, it is hard. Believe me, I know. But we have to keep the door open for them. Even when we know that they are going to betray us, we still have to keep the door open anyway. This is love. If you want to operate much more in the power of God, if you really want to get more close to God, you have to operate more in love. What is the point in having the gift to heal and the gift to prophesy and the gift to teach if you have no love? What you have is for naught if you don't love. We have to keep the door open. Something happened to me recently. And the first thing that came to my mind, Kevin, you need to shut the door on that person. You need to shut the door on that person. But while I was praying, I believe God, the Holy Spirit, whatever, was dealing with me with that. Kevin, don't shut the door. It doesn't matter what that person did to you. It matters what you are doing to that person. If that person comes back to you, you have to keep the door open. No matter how they speak to you, no matter how they treat you, whether they care for you or not, who cares? You have to keep the door open because God is watching you and you are being tested. You are being graded. When you get to heaven, you want to have high marks in every category. You have to keep the door open. As I stated in another video, God always have the door open for us. All we have to do is repent and he is going to accept us back. Repent and turn from our wicked ways. That's it. He always has the door open for us. It doesn't matter what other people are doing to you. You have to have your arms open to your enemies. Yes, when your arms are open, it is easy for them to stab you. <laughs> of course, so be it. This is love. This is love. I am not teaching you anything about conditional love. I am teaching unconditional love. Conditional love is not really love. Love without conditions, that is love. 
Well, I am only going to love you as long as you are healthy. Hey, I am only going to love you as long as you are young. Hey, I am only going to love you as long you are able to walk. But hey, if you can't walk, if you get too sick, hey, <laughs> the love is gone. If the love is gone based upon conditions, then you really did not love that person. I am teaching unconditional love. Whether you are good to me, whether you are bad to me, hey, it is all the same. The door is open. The door is open. When you are that way, I am telling you, God can operate within you so mightily. Love. Love. I pray that this makes sense. God bless you. Make sure you share and subscribe. God bless you.